Hey, Thrond here. Hey, this is Zildgrim. Uh, today we're going to introduce a new series. Uh, we had our uh, bearded axe and, and uh, shield. Uh, we did some stuff with the shield and the sword in one of our reply videos. But today we're going to talk just about the shield. The large Viking round shield. Uh, I mean, heck, this large style shield goes back, I mean, I, mean, I put up a picture a, a few days ago that was from the 3rd century with a bronze center boss. So the same style, the large round, has been around forever. And obviously most reenactors don't use that, so why? It's because they don't understand exactly, a lot of them don't understand the, uh, the, the reason. The mechanics and how it yeah, works. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Now, we're not putting anybody down, we're just saying that what's, what we're trying to do is re recreate why they use this large round. Uh, we know that uh, uh, Roland Warzeka has done a lot of work and he used tall hoffers. Today we want to go over a technique that's just going to be on this series, the shield itself and mechanics of the shield and what it does. So the offhand or the main hand weapon doesn't really matter as much as the shield. So this is a shield series. Right. And uh, what we're going to do today is we're going to do a uh, technique where it, you, you'll see it in some of the other fight manuals with the longsword, believe it or not. Yeah. When I say longsword, I don't mean the Viking Langenstorth where all these people talk about, oh, I say the wrong thing and it's an, ar it's an arming sword. These are more modern terms. Actually, in the eras when the swords were used, everybody knew what a sword was. They would just say Svart, sword, uh, brand, what have you, brand means blade in the yeah. Old Norse. So they just tell you. Sometimes they didn't even tell you the length. You had to guess what they were talking about. You just assume that you know it was yeah. a sword of the day, and, you know, a standard long Viking sword, Langen sword, or you know, uh, uh, sax even. Sometimes large saxes. So anyway, I don't want to get too long in our intro here, but we're going to show a technique that you see in uh, actually several of the uh, old trees in the manuals. Mm. Uh, that's a throw. Yeah, and it's also used in. Uh, uh, I know it's used in the Japanese martial arts as well. So uh, we're going to show how this would apply with round shields in, in a clinch. Yeah. Let's do it. So we intended to get started much earlier in the day, so I apologize for any lighting issues. But, uh, you know, it's now winter, so we're getting a little later, but I was up all night talking to the police because uh, we had a shooting at work. Yeah, you're a bouncer, so. Right, I was, I'm an outside bouncer, and uh, a situation erupted, uh, five shots were fired. I'm fine, unfortunately, one of my colleagues went to the hospital with a couple of slugs in him. So, uh, Didn't he all get your... shot twice, in the, once in the arm, once in the shoulder, and one in the kidney? Like yeah, he times? got shot three times. Three one times. got him in the kidney. So uh, all your best thoughts for my colleague, uh, Keith. He's yeah, one of our bouncers. And uh, thank goodness that I'm okay that I can be here today to do these videos for y'all. Uh, we'll start off. We're going to talk about the clinch that we're talking about that happens. Uh, let's say we're here and somehow, uh, you know, if it's done one way, where uh, you push the shield, we know that. And right come up with where this happens. We're both clenched up. I've got my shield in his arm. He's got his in mine. Well, the whole thing here is, uh, we might need to angle it a little bit more so they can see what's going on. What I'm gonna do is just take this arm here and push in on the shield. Mm. Now what's happened is when I did that, I pushed it out of my own shoulder across. He was pushing it hard, I pushed across my chest, a little scrape arm, whatever, and I come down and cut right in here. Now that's a simple technique to see what just happened. I turned his own shield on when he had it sticking out. Let's redo that. He's going to push like he has business here. It means that I slice right into the arm, which is possible in that clinch. It's also possibly possible to hit the head, but much more difficult depending on how high he's got the shield raised for the cut following his shield line. I understand. But that's not what we're talking about. We want to talk about the actual throw. That was just a setup to show you this technique could work as a counterattack instead of trying to disengage and possibly get hit with him throwing and you throwing at the same time. When we get back in the same position, the throw I'm going to show utilizes this same technique. I push this inside. And I don't know if you all could see that. Are you all right? Yeah, but But um, I think we need to pull it back from the camera from to see that well. All right. We could probably do it at a different angle, too. Oh, yeah. you lost your hat in the load? It's all right. Let's, uh, let's try it again. Right, let's get a little further, further away. And we'll do it from a side view this time. We're both in here. And I'll push this through. Ah! And what I just did is pushed his shield, which scraped my arm slightly, back into him and then just pushed him over my leg by stepping behind him. Now I didn't sweep his leg, I, sw I pushed him over my actual thigh or my leg. I dropped my center of gravity. His hip was over this. I pushed him over. And y'all recognize this move? It's real common. Uh, you just lose the shield for one second just to show him. 
what it would look like with nothing there. Uh, I'm just going to show them the techniques so they see what the move looks like. The move is from here, is if you step in and push him over the leg so you all recognize the, the throw. So you all recognize this as just you pushing him over your, your leg by stepping behind it and stepping in abruptly. You'll see this in long sword. You'll see it in different fight manuals, and you'll see it in Japanese uh, martial arts. I just hope that they can see the actual technique, how I'm, what I'm doing is I'm pushing his shield in. I'm letting it flip inside, and that's how you get the cut. Or I push here and push his shield in. Make sure you keep your head back so you don't get hit in the face with the rimming or anything. I push it in, and I step in and behind, and then throw him over that leg. It's kind of a stepping in behind and twisting at the same time. And if he doesn't expect this, he's going to be thrown just like that. It's a good technique. You want to grab the stuff again. It can be done from the other angle as well. And in this situation, it's a little trickier and a little more dangerous because we're both engaged. And like Roland Moiseka and them, you'll notice a lot of times they'll have the front leg forward. With this type of shield, it doesn't matter as much which leg's forward. Now, in this situation, I want this one forward. But what I've ended up doing here is I'm going to go ahead and let this inside quickly. I can possibly hit him with it. And I don't know if you notice, I've changed, I've transversed, but I've done the same, same technique. What I did is I, I stepped around him. When I moved this in and pressed him and hit him with it, I stepped in behind him, and then I let my shield push him over. Which all he has is shield in the face, so it's done quickly. You're not going to have to worry about a counter like such as a back edge cut. I mean, I'm sure he could possibly try to throw that, but if this is done as a grappling situation, as fast as possible, I don't see how that's going to happen. Because you're in here, he doesn't quite expect this to take place. Oh, oh sorry, you all right? Yeah, still fine. hard on that one. But I'm using this whole shield up high to throw him off balance, because I don't have to worry about just having my arm in the right position. I can use this whole shield to just fly him over and then turn and attack stab, thrust, whatever. Once he's on the ground, you're, if this is a real fight and this was life or death, we wouldn't be playing like this and I throw him off balance so the match is over. I would naturally finish him afterwards. You know, I would turn and finish him quickly. You know, I wouldn't give him a chance to recover. I mean, heck, I might even step on his sword if he drops it or his arm to hold his arm down while I pummel him. Use my shield to bash him with whatever, what have you. So, anyway, I hope you enjoyed the technique. We're just making it short, simple. Yeah. Uh, did you... Did you think it worked effectively? Oh, yes, it works effectively. You <laughs> don't right. see it coming. That's yeah, it. Like I said, this is a shield video because I could have had an axe in this hand. Technically, if we were doing a spear video, I could have a spear in this hand. Anything and still use this technique. Anyway, hope you all enjoyed it. Farewell. Farewell.